Welcome back. You're with us on Trading Hour and uh, we'll move to our special segment, Finn Street now. Abhishek is standing by with a breakdown on 81 bonds, which uh, came to earn a bit of a bad name after the Yes Bank fiasco. Well, additional tier 1 bonds have been focused with the recent issues seen with Credit Suisse. And also, in India, it has been in focus ever since Yes Bank got regulatory approval to write them down. So, let's understand what is additional tier 1 bonds and its importance in capitalization of financial services entities in India. Under the Basel III framework, banks' regulatory capital is divided into Tier 1 capital and Tier 2 capital. So, Tier 1 capital is subdivided into Common Equity Capital, that is CET1, and Additional Tier 1 Capital, that is AT1. So, Equity Capital is classified as CET1 ratio. Perpetual bonds that satisfy specific conditions stipulated by RBI are classified as AT1 bonds. So, Additional Tier 1 bonds are unsecured bonds with no predetermined maturity date. It forms part of lenders' core capital or commonly known as the Tier 1 capital. Now, AT1 bonds clubbed under perpetual bonds to offer a call option that is lenders can repurchase them from investors. Besides, if bank face bankruptcy or run short of capital, they can dismiss the principal amount and not pay any interest. The interest payable to the investors may be either at a fixed rate or at a floating rate. Earlier, the spreads between 81 bonds and NCT coupon was around 100 basis point, which made people put in money into 81 bonds of banks. Issuing banks have the option, subject to conditions stipulated by RBI being satisfied, to recall the 81 bonds issued by them. However, while the banks are not compulsorily mandated to exercise such call option and have a discretion whether to redeem 81s or not, the tacit understanding with investors is that the indicated call option will be exercised as scheduled. However, today, the spread between 81 bond versus the yield in NCDs I have narrowed down to, you know, about 20-30 basis point only. While earlier, investors had the perception of earning more from 81 bonds, post Yes Bank case, most investors prefer safer debt instruments. The majority of the investments since the inception of 81 bonds have been made by big corporates, mutual funds, entities as well as HNIs or high net worth individuals, etc. The loss absorption through the conversion or write-down of 81 bonds instruments is triggered when the CET falls below a predetermined threshold of risk-weighted asset, like it did for Yes Bank. 81 bonds are regulated by RBI in India. Out of 36 lenders, 20 have no 81 bonds in their capitalization, the likes of Yes Bank, Karur Vaisya Bank, Federal Bank, City Union Bank and Bandhan Bank. Seven lenders have 81 bond ratio between 0% to 1%, like Kotak Mahindra Bank, SDFC Bank and ICICI Bank, while nine banks, largely PSU banks, have 81 capital of more than 1%, the likes of Canara Bank, Bank of Baroda and SBI. Now, 81 bonds can be from domestic as well as from foreign markets. So, banks with foreign business or presence of business in foreign locations have a part of their 81 capitalization coming in from foreign market. Abhishek, very interesting there. Thank you very much.